Hi, I'd like to share with you some thoughts I've been having about the future of Minecraft and YouTube and content creation in general, and the shift that we're experiencing in the Minecraft space online, and why it's so important for the platform of YouTube in general, in ways that go far beyond just the game itself. And no, this isn't one of those Minecraft is dying videos that crop up every few months. In fact, I'd like to argue it's kind of the opposite. Now, in order to fully make my point, we kind of have to travel back in time a couple of years to when the 100 days trends became popular. I know a lot of people kind of hold a grudge against the 100 days format for destroying originality in Minecraft on YouTube, but it's an important part of Minecraft history and it kind of gives a broader view into what was happening on YouTube at the time. I think that the original idea for the 100 days videos was actually quite interesting. The first videos, ooh, baby. The first videos in the format were basically just look what I can accomplish in this time limit that I give myself, which I think is a cool idea. It's always fun to set a goal and try and achieve it. But as more and more of these videos started popping up, the content kind of shifted from people really interacting with their worlds in creative ways to just becoming how can I shock my viewers into sticking around by accomplishing the most obscene and mind-numbingly large goals as possible. It became a race to the bottom as retention-based editing kind of took hold across all of YouTube. And I think this era of Minecraft YouTube is even responsible for a lot of the sentiment surrounding updates in recent years. People complain that Mojang isn't putting enough effort in, and to be fair, I do think that their development roadmap might have a few issues, but I don't think it's for lack of effort. I am often amazed by the fact that the game has been out for over a decade, and somehow they've mostly been able to avoid feature bloat. If we got a million new things every update, the game would be nearly inaccessible for new players or players who haven't tried the game in a few years. It would just be overwhelming. Getting back on track here, I think there might be evidence that we're moving away from this retention-based mindset, and I want to share why I think this is super important not just for Minecraft, but for the entirety of YouTube and online media as a whole. I have three pieces of evidence I'd like to share regarding this thought. The first is this world that I'm walking around in. I started posting this survival let's play on YouTube because despite there being countless entertaining videos on YouTube that certainly contained the game of Minecraft, it was really hard to find content that, in my opinion, kind of got back to the original magic of the game, the respect for the journey, the joy of discovery, and most importantly with regards to YouTube, the relatability of it. I want to watch Minecraft players enjoying their worlds and think, hey, I could do that. And somehow in recent years, it feels like YouTubers have gone from being relatable community members to being more like TV show hosts. I want to be very clear. It's not that those types of videos are bad or wrong in any case. They're just such a different genre that it makes it really hard for me to get invested in the world they're building or the creator themselves. And I thought that maybe this could just be a me thing, but I think the success of this channel has kind of proven otherwise. I was expecting to share my episodes with a few dozen or honestly maybe a few hundred viewers, but the fact that we've grown such a wonderful and positive community of thousands in just a few short months tell me there's a lot of you out there that also feel this way. There's so much enjoyment that comes from just playing the game at a slower pace, really experiencing it and building a world you feel connected to. In this survival world, we're 13 episodes in and we haven't even gotten to the Ender Dragon yet. The second piece of evidence that I have is Hermitcraft Season 10. Oh, look at that, some rain. In my years of playing Minecraft, I've checked in with Hermitcraft from time to time, even when I'm not actively playing the game, and I imagine many of you guys are similar. But there's definitely something different about this season. I mean, just look at Green's first few episodes and how they're basically all just about fishing. I think something has definitely shifted for them this season, and it really feels like we're going back to the roots of content creation. In fact, I think the Hermit Rendog really said it best on the Imp and Skiz podcast recently. Let me try explain this. So YouTube for me was always a place where I could watch people just like me doing stuff. It was normal people doing cool, entertaining content on this new, you know, website called YouTube. And I think that that's, that's the magic of YouTube is that it is a place where normal people get to touch something that we all can only ever dream of touching. And I think that uh, season 10 in a way is kind of showing this also in that we're all sort of returning to a more grassroots type of content production where we're not overproducing, we're not going super Hollywood, like we're really scaling it back and bringing the humanity back into it. And I think there's a lot of um, a lot of magic in that that is slowly being lost on YouTube over the the, the course of the last few years because I think that the the producers think that the audience wants Hollywood. But I don't think that they do, personally. I think the audience wants people. 
And finally, I'd like to point your attention to RT Games' new series, Let's Actually Play Minecraft Again. The other day, I sat down and watched this all the way through. It's just a guy playing Minecraft, and it's so magical. Somehow, it simultaneously gets back to the roots of the game and the roots of YouTube. And look at the response it's gotten. So many positive comments just exploring the philosophy of it. So what does this mean for Minecraft and why is it so important for YouTube as a whole? As I've alluded to before, I think the Minecraft community is such a powerful microcosm of online culture that it has the power to change other sectors in the online space as well. And the shift we're starting to see in Minecraft content might help shift the landscape of YouTube as well. My hope is that this means we're slowly steering away from the retention-based TV show style content. Like Rendog said, the beauty of YouTube and other online spaces like Twitch and TikTok is that anyone could create a channel or be a part of the community. There's an unfiltered connection between creators and viewers that is so important for the magic of these spaces. And obviously there are some dangers if you lean too far in that direction too. Parasocial relationships are definitely something to be wary of, but I'd argue that it's still a much, much better place to be than where YouTube has been for the last few years. Those are just some thoughts I've had as someone who has watched a lot of YouTube and played a lot of Minecraft throughout the years. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the matter as well. Oh, and if you happen to be looking for a new Minecraft Let's Play to enjoy, I'd love if you checked mine out. There's my shameless plug for the day. Alright, I'll see you in the next video.